friends! Today we're taking a break from working on culling out those trees. I just need a break. And today, we're still busy. There's still a lot to do here. The plan is to work on renovating the yard again, continuing to get that going. It's, it's going to be a process, just like outside. Uh, clearing out those trees is a process. But uh, before we get started, we have recently got some mail. What do we have here? Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You're full of energy. Micah is most of the time filled with energy. So we have a package here, a couple packages. Yes. So uh, what's in the white package there? I know what this is, but the kids don't. And this is for y'all too. Wow. <gasps> so we have some books. We have Pig Plays Music, Chicken Loves Sports, and Cow Likes to Drive. These are children's books that have been written and illustrated by a friend of ours. Yes, and they are brand new. They just got released, I think, in December. And she has graciously sent us a set to give away to one of you. Each month in 2020, we're conducting a giveaway. And for the giveaway for January, we did it based on those who have signed up for our email newsletter. And if you haven't subscribed to that, make sure you check out the show notes below. And for the January giveaway, one winner will be receiving a set of these children's books, as well as we have items from Baker Creek to help you start your spring garden. And Lacey has some earrings and necklaces that she has made that a winner is going to receive. And there's also a microgreen starter kit that I'm giving away for January as well. <laughs> Just to make it clear, we have four items to give away and there are going to be four different winners. So you have four chances to win something. And for our February giveaway, we're going to do it on my Instagram account, The Fit Farmer. So make sure you stay tuned for that. All right, and we have one more piece of mail, and this one's not a giveaway item, but it comes from my friend Tony at Thomas Urban Farm. Can't wait to see what Tony sent me. Let's see. Uh oh. You got a beanie. There we go to keep my head warm while I'm outside working on trees and the earth. So thanks, thank you very much, Tony. And you can follow Tony at Thomas Urban Farm. He's on uh, Instagram as well. So Josiah, how do you like that book? Which one is that that you're reading there? It's about the pig? Pig plays music. Pig plays the tambourine. Pig plays the glockenspiel. Kept getting out of the fence? Yep. Alright, so you know what you need to do? Yep. What? Clipper wings. That's exactly right. I think I'm gonna let you do this one on your own. You've seen me do it before. Uh, I'll be right here to coach you and guide you, but uh, I think you and Josiah can do it together. Yep. Josiah, come here, please. Alright. You give Sayla a hand with clipping the wing there? No holding. You remember how to do it? Yep. Hold the wing out. And then you're just going to cut right alongside right there. Mm-hmm. It's like cutting fingernails. It doesn't hurt the chicken. As you can see here, you can get a little bit closer there, Sayla. Doesn't hurt her at all. She's just cutting the flight feathers. As you can see, she's not showing any signs of discomfort at all, except for Josiah holding her and she's ready to get out. <laughs> so when you clip the wings, you just clip one side because when they actually try to fly, it throws them off balance with having one wing longer than the other. And it will keep them from getting out of the areas that you're trying to keep them safe in. All done there? Yep. Good job. Got a little bit of work to do, but very good for your first time. Let's just clip these as well back there. Okay. Alrighty, now that I have our tools together, next we're gonna go ahead and rip 
are plywood pieces that I got just yesterday from Lowe's for to go on to our exter exterior walls for our yurt. And what we're doing is we're changing out the old canvas that wraps around the yurt and replacing it with permanent plywood on the outside and then putting the Tyvek material over that as a moisture barrier and then we're going to put the siding on after that but first we got to finish this plywood so i'm going to go ahead and cut our boards cut our pieces that we're going to be installing so that way all our cuts are made and we pretty much know from what we started on on the yurt we started with four foot boards and we're actually going to make a slight change we did two feet at the bottom of that and the just the side of the wall is six feet but we notice there's a little gap so we're going to go with three foot pieces on the bottom on the other side and come back and adjust and redo these boards here so part of learning all of this is this brand new to us so uh, i haven't seen anybody on youtube before and all we know is our friend beverly and shane who have converted their yurt and we're just following in their footsteps and trying to do the same And helping me right here is my sidekick, Sayla, who's all geared up with her safety gear. She's got her goggles on as well as her ear protection. And I'm gonna do the same. Since our property is on a slope, this side of the yard is a lot higher than the other side. So we're gonna have to get some scaffolding so I can reach up there and put it up there. So uh, let's find some scaffolding. You may wonder why we have a bunch of scaffolding here and building supplies. This is actually my dad's shop, and he is a masonry contractor, and has been for many, many years now. So it's such a blessing that we're able to have these things at our disposal to sure. use. Definitely is. I actually worked with him for a little bit, and that's how I learned to carry these. While Mike goes and gets another piece of scaffolding, and if you don't know, those are called scaffold bucks. I'm gonna go see if I could find some screw jacks for the bottom. And here we are, screw jacks. So we'll need four of them. You might be wondering why I know about all this stuff. Well, I used to work for my dad, and uh, that's what I did. I was a laborer, so I helped set up scaffolding, tear down scaffolding, shoveled mortar, carried brick, drove the tractor. I did all that, so that's how I know a little bit about this stuff. Now that we have our screw jacks and our bucks, we're gonna have to get some braces. And then finally, to top it off, to actually top it off, we are gonna need some walk boards. And there's actually some right here. We're gonna use these aluminum walk boards. And uh, so we'll have something to walk on. So we have our walk boards now. And the last thing we need to get are our braces. And they are right here. Josiah, you gonna help me? Yeah! So, these go in the bottom of those. Okay. 
Conveniently, after we gathered all of our scaffolding pieces, our old friend Greg showed up to give us a helping hand for today's project. Now, you can just let me go. So how high have you been up on the scaffolding? I think I've been three bucks high. That's plenty high enough. I can't remember. I can't remember if it was three or four for me, but it was pretty high up there. It got to the point where it felt like it was just swaying. I was like, I, I can't do it. I can't do it. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna go ahead and put the wall boards on top, and we'll make sure it's all level. I see you walking on walk boards. That's a bad idea. Complete failure. <laughs> Your whole ship fell apart. Hey, Cap. Hey, Cyrus. 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 And once we got the wall boards put up on top, you have to make sure that your scaffolding is level so you don't go falling off. <laughs> so you level it from side to side and front to back. And I had the perfect level for you. So now you got a level. Yep, right there. <laughs> You're ridiculous. Bigger levels are in there. <laughs> okay, I went ahead and put a board here to make it easier to level or to see if it's level. And look, boom, right there, it's level that way. It's because Greg's here. Yeah, it's all about Greg. He did it. Next, after we had our scaffolding all set up, it, we finally were at the point where we could start making progress on this project. All right, first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead, take this board off from where we were before. Because this canvas is just overlapped. And uh, this is what we didn't finish working on. So we're gonna try to take that off and put wood on there today. And as I was pulling off the yurt's sidewalls, I noticed a few little surprises. Man, it's crazy. Look at all the stink bugs. This is ridiculous. Man. We constantly are having stink bugs inside. And it's like, when I see this, it's like, no wonder. This is ridiculous, man. Take some of these home with you, Greg. <laughs> and Sayla just loves stink bugs, if you didn't know. <laughs> They're not our friends. Whoa! There's nothing compared to that one spot. Oh, don't bleed my knee! <laughs> oh. After I removed the sidewall, next we stapled the insulation up around the lattice work of our yurt. And from there, we put the plywood right on top of that. And the reason why we did that, because some of you had asked that before, is because that is our only form of insulation right now. Yeah, for and, now. And that's the insulation that we've had for, I don't know, five and a half years well, now for it, here. It's been up for six years, so, so yeah. So yeah, and it has worked fine. We plan to add to that, but keeping that up allows us to still have some type of insulation right now. And we're planning on having a yurt Q&A video. So all of your yurt questions that you ask that we haven't answered already, we want you to go ahead and list those in the comment section below so we can get that video out to you. So after the sidewall was removed, insulation was stapled up. Next, you and Greg were holding up the plywood for me as I was on top of the scaffolding, drilling it on as the drill master that I am. And <laughs> let me say, heights are not my favorite thing. No. So I took one for the team being up on the scaffold. Uh, this, this scaffold, was, it wasn't too high, but once again, heights 
are not my favorite thing. No, he does not <laughs> like heights. Well, you know I can't what they say. There are no two of there. Yeah. They do the same. Are you ready? Yeah. 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 Y
she is a stay-at-home mom but she has written and illustrated all of these books and they're you know different farm animals um cow likes to drive chicken loves sports and pig plays music and they're super cute our kids really love to sit down and read them and i think your kids will too i'm going to leave a link down in the description on where you can buy these for your kids well that's it for today we'll see you next time and as always be strong grow on and live life without excuses see you later bye guys <laughs>